some payment is better than nothing. Not, no payment is kind of like a middle finger to those other two children that you have. And that's not appropriate at all. Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have a clip for you from Judge Patricia Fassett at the Cowlitz County Superior Court in Washington. She has a mom who has a new boyfriend and a new baby, and she doesn't care about the two kids she had previously with her ex. She kind of just doesn't care about them. At least that's what it seems like. Let me know what you guys think. Gilliam and Gilliam, 20-3-0042908. That matters, right? All right. And I did see, let me see, there was an email that your office sent, Miss Baldwin, with an updated sheet. Let me just. Yes. I get so many emails. Things get buried so quickly. Let's see here. When did you send that last week or was it earlier this week? It must have been last week because it uh, my filings shows December one, so it must have been last week, probably Friday. It is. Well, uh -huh. So I should have looked there first. Okay, <laughs> so the respondent's debt calculation. I see the updated um, that was. It's dated from the Division of Child, Child Support eleven twenty nine twenty three. Okay. Correct. Do we have Mr. Gilliam? I'm not Mr. This is Mrs. That is the. Oh, I'm sorry. We have Miss Gilliam, which is, yeah. I'm sorry, Stockwell now. Yes, she was. Oh, and there she is. Um, She's sorry, here. Her, yes. Yes. So we're on here um, today for review regarding contempt. Um, and my concern is, is we really have not changed course. Um, if you look back through the pleadings, we really, we started the contempt back in April. Um, it took us some time to serve Ms. Stockwell. We were before the court, um, I believe in June. Um, and then um, we had a review and then we set this review out even further. The issue here is that when you look at the debt calculation, we have no child support payments made in January going all the way to June. We have her making, basically getting served, the court kind of giving her um, some ultimatums. So we see a small payment in June, a small payment in July, and then once again, nothing in September, nothing in October, nothing in November. Here we are December. So if you look at this sort of little debt calculation just for 2023 um, and assuming, you know, here we are December, you know, not seeing any payments made. So essentially over the course of a year, we have two months out of 12 where anything has been paid. And the, I always have a concern when somebody pays nothing, month after month of $0 paid. So it's not, I couldn't scrape together 20 bucks. I couldn't scrape together anything. And so that does get to where we're talking about intransigence is somebody who just says, not going to do it and you can't make me. Um, and that's where the teeth of the sanction, uh, unfortunately, need to get sharper um, for Ms. Stockwell. My client's been very patient. We've kicked this out, you know, for not just like a month or two weeks, you know, get a payment, but sort of like months at a time saying, hey, kind of get it together and start making a plan and start making payments. And Ms. Stockwell just instead of sort of taking that grace from the court and from my client has kind of just blown it off. Um, at this point, you know, we've been at this again since April when we filed the contempt. We're kind of done with some of those um, simpler encouragements. And we're at the point where we need some teeth to get Ms. Stockwell to get real about the fact that she has to make payments. Um, she has to pay child support. So at this point, I think what is most appropriate um, it's, uh, we've got a couple weeks. So either I'd like to come back on the 26th or, um, in my preference, it's 26 because, um, your honor is here. And I know that the docket changes in January, but essentially I'd like to see some real payment this month. Um, and if she doesn't, that she shows up on the 26th in person, ready to spend some time in jail until she writes a plan on how she's going to pay. Um, because so far, none of this has gotten through to her, and it's been an extended period of time where these children who are entitled to support aren't receiving it. Um, 
Thank you. I just, uh, for the record, I do see that. So there was an order on contempt that was entered the in June for the April contempt. And then there was, it appears a satisfaction or partial satisfaction, a judgment uh, in July after another, um, well, after the amended tax return was ordered. And then in August, there was another $250 in attorney's fees ordered. Um, I'm assuming that or has that been addressed? No, no, she has not paid those. And we've tried to give her credit anywhere where it's appropriate to do so. Um, and you can kind of see from that debt calculation that, that in August, <clears throat> she paid a little bit over the total arrearage, um, I think by about almost $300 over the sort of monthly amount towards the arrearage, which was good. But then once again, no payments thereafter. All right, Ms. Stockwell, any updates for the court here? Um, yes. Uh, so we have been trying to figure out how to piece together a plan because the day after I had my baby, we got hit by a drunk driver and my car got totaled. So I haven't been able to return to work for lack of transportation um, and lack of child care for lack of transportation. Um and we've been scrapping together and trying to piece together money and neither of us felt like the $20 would make a difference. Um, so we've been trying to make sure we are able to pay a lump sum so it doesn't look like we're just here's pocket change sort of thing. Um, we've been um, trying to rework billing We've put off paying multiple things, just trying to come up with the money. Um, right now, we're in this space where if we we have to choose between paying the child support or paying rent. And I can't, in my right mind, put my brand new baby and my stepdaughter homeless um, to pay my ex money for the kids when he's making more money than we are on a regular basis. Um, I would absolutely love to be paying them. I would love to be able to help support them. Um, that is my goal. And I'm, my boss is very understanding about the fact that I can't get to work. She said, as soon as I am able to get transportation, I'm able to start right back up. Um, we've been keeping in contact every 15 to 14 days to make sure that I'm still trying to find a car, I've uh, reached out to family members to see if they'd be able to help so that I can get back to work and get back to paying. Um, where there were payments uh, to the child support, those were months when I had a steady job and had finally gotten all of the um, auto, um, like taken out of my paycheck directly sort of payments um, so that it was one less um, headache of trying to schedule payments and get everything figured out. Um, I have applied at jobs for stay at home. There's not many that are actually, actually hiring, um, just kind of a, Hey, apply. And then I never hear back from them. I just heard back from a job that I applied to in January saying that they were full and didn't need anybody. Um, but I've been applying for jobs stay at home wise so that I can still be able to put money towards this. Um, but if the $20 is going to make a difference, I will send the $20 we have or the $5 or whatever we end up having left over. Um, I will gladly send it. I just didn't think that was going to make that big of a deal um, or even really look good to the court's eyes for me to be sending pocket change. Um, so my apologies for not knowing that that would be such a big deal. Um, and that's, that's about all I can say right now with, uh, not being able to even get to work currently to help pay for this. Briefly. Yes. Just, so I, I just want to confirm. So, and, and I'm sorry to hear about the, uh, the car accident. Nobody was injured. Everybody's okay. Other than the car, I guess. Uh, no lasting injuries okay i'm glad to hear that yes miss baldwin go ahead well unfortunately oh. these are sort of 
uh, similar story, different day. If, anytime we come to court, it's always sort of a, a woe was me, gee, all these things have happened. And perhaps that would make sense to consider if we were in a situation where I, I set the review like two weeks and we were sort of dogging her the whole time. This is a case where we are setting reviews out months at a time, giving her an opportunity to sort of get it together. And she never does. She makes these choices of, I basically want to be a stay-at-home parent to this new child that I chose to have and to my boyfriend's child. Um, instead of the boyfriend has an obligation to take care of that child, that is not her obligation. Um, so these are choices that are being made um, and perhaps collectively between her and her boyfriend. But there's ones where they're consistently over a year, 10 months out of 12, deciding that the two children that she had with my client deserve zero dollars. Um, so again, we're making choices. And she's had a year at this point, or since April, I guess, since we filed the contempt to get these things together, she just never does. And unless there are some true teeth to the court's order, she is never going to do so. Um, so that's where, you know, we've put it out long periods of stretches, you know, hoping she would get things together. She just isn't. And unfortunately, um, we need to have um, a harsher penalty. And I believe that will unfortunately result in action because so far what we've done has not resulted in really any action on her part. It's all, gee, I, I wish I could, but even now there's no stated plan on how she's going to pay. It It's completely vague of, you know, here's what I'm doing. Here's what I've done. It's sort of all, well, you know, if something comes around, I guess I'll pay, but that's about it. Um, that's not appropriate when we're talking about child support. The children in my clan's home they don't deserve support. Um, this is a court order, not a not a G. We'd like you to do this some period of time. So, um, I understand the frustration. I and I understand uh, Ms. Stockwell's uh, circumstances. Uh, we unfortunately, it's it's unfortunate the court often sees. Uh, folks have kids and, and uh, without the forethought about how they're going to support those kids. Um, it's, and in this case, it's, um, I, I understand uh, the frustration here. There was an order of child support entered in January uh, that changed the support, the temporary support. And in the most recent uh, debt calculation, it appears that uh, as Ms. Baldwin stated, there was a payment made in July of $90 and August of $780 uh, for a total of $870. And the arrearages uh, just for this year alone are over $5,000. So um, while I understand making decisions between being uh, homeless and providing for other children, um, there's a, there is an order in place. So here's what I, I will set a review for December 26th at 1 p.m. I would ask that Ms. Stockwell be present in person on the 26th at 1 p.m. However, Ms. Stockwell has until December 15th at noon, so that's next Friday at noon, to provide a plan to Ms. Baldwin's office regarding payment of uh, child support. Uh, as you know now, Ms. Stockwell, some payment is better than nothing. No, no payment is kind of like a middle finger to those other two children that you have, and that's not appropriate at all. Uh, I appreciate you saying, well, we, we want to give bigger chunks. Doesn't matter. Uh, frankly, the court would see a $25 a month, $50 a month payment as much better uh, for everyone than zero, 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 zero. Um, if the plan that's provided to Ms. Baldwin's office is acceptable to, to Ms. Baldwin and her client, that date on the 26th can be struck. And if you want to renote it for another review, by all means, we can do that. If uh, it is not acceptable by Ms. Baldwin, and so I, putting the ball in Ms. Baldwin and her client's court for this, if, if that plan is not acceptable, then I expect Ms. Stockwell to be in person uh, for court on December 26th, 2023 at one o'clock PM on the second floor of the Hall of Justice. 
and I guess the implication, Ms. Stockwell, is the court is uh, most definitely considering jail time in lieu of uh, child support as uh, this is just, it's gotten out of hand and it's only going to get worse and worse the, the longer non-payment happens and those arrearages are just going to keep growing and then interest will start applying and it's not good for anybody. Okay. So uh, Ms. Baldwin has the authority to strike that 26th. Um, and if they don't feel the plan is sufficient and frankly, if there's some negotiation between the parties after you review the plan, I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, I, I feel like um, Mr. Gilliam and Ms. Baldwin have been willing to work with you, Ms. Stockwell. So, you know, uh, the sooner you get a plan to them, the more opportunity you have to have any, uh, some discussions with them about how you're going to address this moving forward. Okay. Any questions or concerns? No, you are. Very good. Thank you. All right. Me. Good luck. So did anybody notice her face when the judge told her she had to be there in person on the 26th? She looked like, oh, crap, <laughs> I have to be there in person. They just might actually put me in jail. Yeah, they might. At least that threat is there. And I bet you they come up with a big chunk of money, at least enough to satisfy the court for a little while. I bet you they do. Thank you guys so very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.